So here we are at the Royal Society. I've got my gloves on again, ready to handle another object. And wouldn't you know it, it's up there. Keith, oh, I want to handle oh, the I object. I feel so guilty, Brady, but... Um... What is this, Keith? What is this, this contraption that is strapped to the ceiling of the atrium here at the Royal Society? It is, yes. It's a bit Star Wars, isn't it? This is Ariel 1, Ariel 1. which is uh, the first British venture into space. So it's a satellite uh, for uh, observing in the ionosphere and uh, it's a great piece of science. This is the engineering model. Of course, they sent the real one up into space. So this is the one that they tested the systems on. But this isn't like just a for show model. That is, a, that is like the engineering. That's like a real important it, it's thing. It's a real thing, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a great object, I think. Now I feel even worse that I can't touch it. <laughs> can we at least get a better look at it? We can do. Let's go upstairs and, and have a closer look. There is a mezzanine up there. So James, we're gonna go up to the mezzanine and get a look from up there. Okay, Keith, so now we've come up to the same level as the satellite. Still can't touch it. It's still too far still away. Still a bit, bit, yeah. bit too far away. So let's get back to the story of Ariel 1. Mm -hmm. You call this Britain's first venture into space, but it's not an entirely British satellite, is it? It isn't. The Americans offered other nations the, the, the possibility of putting scientific experiments in space in the late 1950s. Uh, the British got on board and they uh, provided six instrument packages for what was initially called the UK one and then Ariel one. So the Americans built the satellite infrastructure and uh, they launched it on a Thor Delta rocket from Cape Canaveral. How come it's here at the Royal Society? It doesn't seem to have that strong a Royal Society link. Well, it does via our fellows because many of them worked on the packages and the Royal Society was part of the UK team who developed the science around that. Do you know much about the parts or is that not your area of expertise? Uh, we know a little bit about the parts and, and you recognise that the solar panels there which are the little paddles around the, the the side there's a mass spectrometer on top and you can see the aerials popping out of the top there i can't help noticing there are a few wires dangling off there, it. there are a few wires so this would have been used to test the systems and therefore it's had a hard life they put it in a vacuum chamber uh, and, and try to subject it to the, the same sort of rigorous conditions you get in space so what next keith was this a great triumph or was this one of these heroic british failures so it was very, very good. They were getting good data over several weeks. Uh, and uh, then something rather extraordinary happened. The satellite is called Ariel, very Shakespearean, of course. Ariel girdled the globe. But then Ariel met Caliban. Missile preparation for the July launch of the Starfish Prime Shot was one aspect of an extensive team effort to measure the widespread detonation phenomena from the 1.45 megaton weapon set to burst 400 kilometers high. The Americans detonated a nuclear explosion in space. The missile lifted off and began its long programmed trajectory. So the Americans set off a nuclear bomb in space, like they do, and... Uh, they nuked our satellite. <laughs> well, they kind of nuked their own satellite. They did, yeah, yeah, and several <laughs> others, not just this one. Here, in still pictures, are two profile views of the Starfish Prime Aurora as seen from the Hawaiian Islands 700 miles away. To explain what happened, we've got some old science journals here. Do you want to talk me through? These are old copies of New Scientist that you've got. So this is the articles around uh, the launch of Ariel 1 and the great expectations they had for it. It's funny to think that this is a time when a satellite is such a big deal that yeah. like advertising people are jumping on board and getting involved it's like this is yeah. this is a celebrity this thing this is the beginning of the space age proper so it really is big stuff we've got happy times here come on though let's cut to the chase uh, look at this for a headline effects of the space bomb you don't get enough news stories about space bombs these days with the starfish prime an accomplished fact project scientists began the final steps of reducing and interpreting the tremendous volume of data obtained. Well, they, they did a test uh, and, of course, didn't properly realise what the effects were likely to be. So, of course, when they detonated this 1.4 megaton device, it threw up a lot of radioactive material where satellites were orbiting and it degraded very badly Ariel 1's uh, solar panels. And uh, here we have uh, the, the, the leader in the New Scientist. Space bomb and Ariel, a dismaying outcome. A dismaying outcome. You set off a nuclear bomb and ruined my experiment, and I am dismayed. 
So basically this is an editorial that's been written in New Scientist where they're saying what they think about what's gone wrong. I love this, but you have to read this because this can only be read in your accent. Oh, okay, so here we have the damage will be a source of disappointment to the British physicists engaged in the aerial experiments. Classic, classic British understatement. Carpet chewing outrage, I think is what they <laughs> meant. It is a mystery that is about to be uncovered by you know who. It's Keith, head librarian. <laughs> Come on, Keith. Right, let's go and. Here he is. Here he is. <laughs> Always on hand. Tell me, Keith, what is this about? What is this? You call this the Brady Collection. 